Hello, and welcome to Chapter 3 of the Wink Getting Started series entitled Peripherals, Suppliers, and Product Categories. In Chapter 3, we'll review the process for connecting your practice's peripheral devices, including your laser printers, label printers, barcode scanners, and card readers. During this video, we'll also review the process for creating accounts for each of your practice's suppliers. Finally, we'll close with the process for creating or modifying what we call product categories. You should have by now watched Chapter 2 of our series entitled User Profiles and Store Settings. In that video, we described the process for modifying user profiles, creating new users, new tax codes, and new payment methods. We also installed the Wink Gateway app on our smartphone to be able to send appointment reminders or pickup confirmations via text message. Lastly, we filled in all of our store's address and legal information, including our logo and our tax ID. Now then, this video will begin with step number 10, connecting your POS peripheral devices. In this video, we will connect three of the most popular Wink peripheral devices, namely the Datamax label printer, the Honeywell barcode scanner, and the MagTech card reader. A full description of each product is available in the Wink product catalog or by visiting the Wink store via your Wink software. Datamax is one of the most trusted names in the point of sale industry. The Datamax label printer is the only label printer integrated with Wink, and it was chosen because of its excellent reputation for quality and durability. Now then, your Datamax label printer can accommodate a variety of labels, including frame labels, exam labels, mailing labels, and shipping labels. For the remainder of this video, we're going to focus on frame labels. What you see here are blue frame labels. Wink can also provide you with white frame labels and yellow frame labels. The white ones are obviously the most popular. Please note you can get more information about all labels mentioned in the Wink catalog or by visiting the Wink store in your Wink software. The next peripheral device to introduce is the Honeywell barcode scanner. Honeywell is not only one of the world's most recognized brands, but they are also a world leader in barcode scanning technology. Wink is integrated with two Honeywell barcode scanners, a wireless model and a wired one. Wink is not integrated with any other barcode scanner. Every document printed by Wink includes a barcode. Barcodes on frames and lenses means you can process a sale in under 30 seconds. Barcodes on tray labels and invoices make it easy to locate a pending job in Wink. Most importantly though, barcoding your frames means you can do an inventory audit in 30 minutes as opposed to 2-3 to three days via traditional pen and paper. The last device we're going to connect to Wink is the MagTech encrypted card reader. Again, this is the only card reader integrated with Wink. This three-track card reader can not only read most major credit cards, but it is also capable of reading mag stripes on the back of most government and insurance ID cards. The MagTech card reader is highly recommended for practices that want to integrate their payment processing with Wink via one of our payment processing sponsors. Please note, you may be eligible for Wink premium support at no charge when you sign up with one of our payment processing sponsors. Free premium support means we upload all of your data, train all of your staff, and you can call us at any time to help you with anything you need, whenever you need it, all at zero charge. It's worth looking into, especially if you think you might need the extra help to get started. Please note, for practices that didn't want to integrate their payment processing with Wink, but that did want to take advantage of premium support, the service is available at a fixed rate of $100 a month. But there are three other important reasons for integrating your payment processing with Wink. The first is increased speed and reduced errors when generating invoices. The second is not having to spend time at the end of a busy day reconciling your credit card charges with your invoices. The third and most important reason, though, is because when you integrate your payment processing with Wink, you'll be able to take advantage of Wink's automated billing system for reordering of contact lenses. In essence, Wink will send an email or text message to your patients to remind them to reorder their contact lenses before they run out of supply or before they go online to purchase from a competitor. Then, Wink will automatically charge their credit cards, 
automatically deposit the funds to your account, and automatically send you or your supplier the order details. All of these benefits and more are available to you when you integrate payment processing with Wink. For more information about this, give us a call at one 764 -4318. Now then, before I begin, please note, the process I'm about to describe with respect to connecting devices to your PCs, configuring printers, installing drivers, all of these steps have to be done on all computers on which Wink is installed. This is especially important with respect to installation of POS peripheral devices like barcode scanners, label printers, and card readers. Okay, let's begin. Now then, the first step to connecting these devices with Wink is actually to close Wink on your PC. The next thing to do is to actually connect those peripheral devices to your computer. Wink peripheral devices are available in both USB and serial format. For the most part, most of you are going to prefer USB connectivity, although for many POS peripheral devices, Wink recommends serial connections. For the purpose of today's video, the devices I'm going to be connecting are going to be connected via USB. To do so, begin by plugging it in. As you plug it in, your computer will make a little sound. Furthermore, drivers will install on your computer. To know whether the drivers are installing properly, look at the bottom of your screen. When the drivers have finished their installation, you can relaunch Wink. Now then, as you can see at the bottom right, I have four icons. Each one of them represents a different peripheral device that Wink can integrate with. Three of the icons have a red square around them. This means that Wink has not completed the integration process yet. The second device is the Datamax label printer, which has already been previously connected to this Wink software on this PC. In order to complete the installation process, all you need to do is click on any one of these three red squares, just like this. When you do so, certain programs are going to install on your computer. Simply follow the on-screen instructions in order to complete the installation process. And there you go. As you can see at the bottom of your screen, the system is finishing the installation process of these three different devices. The last two devices are a card reader and a payment terminal. It's unlikely that you will have both. In our case, there is a card reader which is installed. If it didn't install properly, a red square will appear around it. Simply click on it again. Now that all three icons are white, you can assume that the installation is complete. In the event that you were unable to install these devices using the methodology just described, we first recommend closing Wink and relaunching it. Another option would be to click on Settings, go to USB Device Installation, and follow these steps by first installing the USB libraries, restarting Wink, and installing the USB drivers. If all of that doesn't work, a separate video available via Wink's YouTube page is available and describes the process for connecting peripheral devices in greater detail. The next step in the onboarding process is step number 11. Calibrate your Datamax label printer. Let's do that together. Now the first step in calibrating your Datamax label printer is understanding how the Datamax printer works. A number of videos are available on the subject via YouTube. Wink has also provided you with both written instructions and links to many of those videos. Those instructions and links were sent to you via this email. Simply click on this link to download this document. Then scroll down to this section on the Datamax printer. Here you will find the instruction manual and YouTube videos explaining how to both calibrate the sensor and load ribbons and labels. 
Here you will also find a quick guide to describing how the play pause button works on your Datamax printer. To put it briefly, the light above the play pause button should look like this. If it does, it means that your printer is properly calibrated. Next, your labels should be slightly sticking out of the printer like this. If they are, everything is set up properly. If one of those things is not done properly, you can follow these instructions here which are designed to help you properly calibrate your printer. A final test to ensure that your Datamax printer is properly connected and configured is to momentarily press the play pause button. When you do so, a single label should come out of the printer. Now then, let's return to Wink. Now that we've confirmed that the printer is properly connected and that the light is green and that the label is sticking out of the printer ever so slightly, the next step is to make sure that the printer and the labels are properly aligned. Let's do that together. To begin, click on Settings. Next, click on Calibrate Datamax Printer. Okay, what you see here are a series of parameters for your Datamax labels. Okay, I'm going to begin with the heat setting here in the middle. Your Datamax label printer is a thermal label printer. It prints on a mylar label, a polyester-like material. Your objective should be to get your heat setting as low as possible while still producing the highest quality print. Here's an example of what that looks like. As you can see, the label on the left hasn't printed very well, whereas the label on the right is very dark and very clear. Your objective should be to get your labels looking as good as possible while keeping your heat setting as low as possible. A common heat setting for many Datamax printers is about 25. Next, your initial row alignment is the instruction given to the Datamax printer telling it how far to the right or to the left the label should be printed. Here again is a picture of three labels. As you can see, the label on the left seems to have printed too far to the left. The label on the right seems to have printed too far to the right. The label in the middle, however, is perfectly centered. To find your center point, you can change the value up here from 135 to 175. I'm going to set it back to 150. Next, the initial column alignment is the instruction given to your Datamax printer as to how high or how low the printing should appear on your labels. Here again is another picture of three typical labels with three typical settings. Again, to change any of those settings, you can simply come in here and change it from 225 to 275 so as to find the right level. I again am going to set it back to my setting of 250. Lastly, your barcode row alignment is the instruction given to your Datamax printer telling it how far to the right or to the left to print your barcode on the label. Here again is a picture of what that could look like. Once again, to change your barcode row alignment from right to left, you can come in here and modify this from 235 to 295. I'm going to set it back to my setting of 265 as it seems to work quite nicely for my labels. Each time you make a change up here, you can click on the test print button to see what it looks like. When you're finished, your label should come out looking like this. And we're done. The next step in the getting started process is to test our Honeywell barcode scanner. Let's do that together now. Testing your Honeywell barcode scanner is actually a very simple process. You've just finished printing a series of labels. Simply pick up your barcode scanner and scan any of the labels which you just printed. If you see this message, it actually means that your barcode scanner is working properly. Those labels that we printed earlier were just test labels, so of course there is no product associated with any of them. And we're done. The next step in the getting started process is step number 13. Configure your printers and trays. Let's do that together. 
Before I move on, allow me to remind you that the procedure which I am applying in today's video must be applied to every computer on which Wink is installed. This is especially important for this next section related to printers and trays, where you will define to which printer your print jobs should go. Obviously, if you have many different computers, you could have many different printers. Therefore, it's necessary to define at the onset which printer should receive which jobs from which computers. And this will need to be done on every computer on which Wink is installed. Also, before I move on, please note there is another video available via our YouTube page which goes into a considerable amount of detail and explains how to properly configure your HP LaserJet printer. It also explains how to properly configure your Microsoft Windows program to be able to print on worksheet half letter paper. I'm going to be skipping over that point now because I'm going to assume you've already watched that video. Therefore, to begin configuring your printers and trays, click on Settings. Next, go down to Printers and Trays and click. Now, via Wink you can print on a variety of paper sizes. The first is Worksheet Half Letter. So the process now is to provide instructions to your computer. The instructions are as follows. When printing an RX worksheet on half letter size paper, to which printer and to which tray should the job be sent? Let me take you through it. When printing the RX worksheet on worksheet half letter, I want to print on my HP LaserJet printer. And I do not need to select my tray because it's half letter paper, it has been specially configured and the software will know exactly where to go. Next, when printing the invoice and RX worksheet together on a single sheet of paper, the paper to be used is the Wink Special Wink Perforated Paper. It will be printed again on my HP LaserJet printer. But this time, it's going to be in the paper in tray number 2. Next, when printing an RX lab order form on half letter size paper, I want to print it again in my HP LaserJet printer, and again because it's half letter size paper, I do not need to define the tray. When printing a contact lens worksheet on worksheet half letter paper, I'm going to again select the very same printer, and again not select the tray because of its special size. Next, when printing an invoice and contact lens worksheet, I want to print it on this special Wink perforated paper, and I want to print it on, on my HP LaserJet printer and the paper located in tray number 2. When printing an invoice on letter-sized paper, again, my HP LaserJet printer, but this time I want to print it in tray number 3. This is why we strongly recommend this HP LaserJet printer with three trays. All your jobs can go to a single printer and at the onset will tell it where to print. I'm going to continue through the process now. Now that those settings have all been entered, I simply click on save and there you have it. The settings have been saved successfully. Having done this, I no longer need to select my printer or my tray when printing out a document from Wink. Wink will know exactly where to send the print job. Once again, allow me to remind you once more that these settings must be applied on every single computer on which Wink is installed. Once you're done with all this, press close. And we're done. The next step in the Getting Started series is step number 14. Create three typical suppliers. For example, a frames distributor, an ophthalmic lab, and an insurance company. Let me show you how we do that. We're now moving on from the settings portion of our Getting Started series and moving into this area over here. In particular, we want to create new suppliers, so I'm going to click on Suppliers. As with all other screens, what first loads is a list of all suppliers currently in the system. Currently there are none, therefore my list is blank. To create a new one, click on New. 
I'm going to begin by creating an account for one of my frame distributors. That company's name is Frames Express. Just as I did before when creating a user, I'm going to enter as much information about this supplier as I can. If I have a contact there, I'll type his name. I'll enter an address. and a zip code. Next, I'll enter a phone number. I'll enter his fax number. Finally, I'll enter an email address. It's very important to have this information in the system. If ever you wanted Wink to send a purchase order or a communication of any kind to any suppliers, their fax number and email address is very important. Next, the absolute most important thing to do for every single supplier is to insert your account number with that supplier. To insert an account number, click on Add New Account Number. Next, type in your account number here. Next. Click on Assign to Stores. You must now assign this account number to one of your locations. Again, in our database at this time, we only have one location. So I'm simply going to assign this account number to this location and click on Apply. And there you have it. If I had many locations or if I had many account numbers, the process would be exactly the same. Simply click on Add New Account Number. If you have a second account number with the same supplier, you can add it this way and assign it to the location. And there you have it. When you're done, simply click on Save. In the event that you made a mistake, you can always edit this record and delete by clicking on that button. If you don't have an account number for your supplier, then we recommend that you enter default as your account number in that cell and click on save. No matter what, it's very, very important that every supplier have an account number, be it a real account number or something fictitious like the word default. Now then let's move on and create our second supplier, new. I'm now going to create an insurance company that I deal with often. The insurance company name is Optical Insurance Inc. Their address information is important, but even more important is their fax number and their email address. Next, if they're an insurance company, Select Insurance Provider. Next, add your account number. If you have an account number, type it in here, like this, and click Assign to Stores, and Apply, and Save. Again, if you do not have an account number, type the word Default and click on Save. Now let's create a third supplier. To do so, click on New. This last supplier that I'm going to create is an ophthalmic lab. The lab's name is A1 Ophthalmic Lab. Their address information 456 Optical Drive, Postal Code, Telephone Number, Fax, and Email Address. If there is Finishing Lab, select this box. If they're a surfacing lab, select this box. Again, put in your account number. 
Again, assign it to your store. Again, click on Save. And there you have it. To summarize, the most important information that you need in every single supplier's account is your supplier's name, their phone numbers, fax numbers, and email addresses. Check off one of these boxes as required, enter your account number, and assign it to your location. With respect to Ophthalmic Labs, it's especially important that you enter their fax and email addresses here. Doing so will permit you to send lab orders to those labs, either via fax or by email, directly from Wink, instead of via your separate fax machines or email accounts. Okay, now that we've created our three suppliers, let's see what it looks like in the list. Here you have it. All three suppliers appearing properly in the list. Now that we're done with this step, I'll close the window. And we're done. The next and final step of Chapter 2 of the Getting Started series is step number 15. Create, modify, or delete five product categories. Let me show you what that looks like now. We're now going to bring you into the Product Services section of Wink. To modify a product category, click on Product Categories. By default, we've already created five categories for you. You can delete, modify, or edit any of them. The best way to describe a product category is to give you a, a practical example of how it might be used. In your store, you likely have between 500 and 2,000 frames. There's different ways to group those frames. You can group them by brand. You can group them by price range. You can also group them by category. So you can define certain frames as being economy frames, other frames as being high-end frames. The purpose of defining them in this way is to permit you to generate different types of reports at a later date. This step is not obligatory. It is nevertheless something that a lot of stores want to do because it helps them generate different types of reports and get a different kind of understanding of their clientele. Now then, to modify any one of the items that you see here, simply double click on it and click on edit. If your first language is not English but is in fact French, you might want to change this and click on Save. I'm going to change that back now and click on Save. Next, you may at your discretion choose to create your own categories. To do so, click on New. In your name field, type the name of your first category, Low. Before clicking on Save, we recommend that you put a number value before this. So for example, put a 1. The reason for the numbering value is that Wink will by default organize your values alphabetically. If you wanted them to appear in some other order, by putting a number in front of your label, it will appear the way you want it to. So I'll create the first one as low, save, new. I'll create the next one as two, medium, save, and I'll create another one as 3 high, save. As you can see, the options I created are right here. Now then, if you wanted to delete any items, simply double click on it, click on edit, and click on delete. And yes, again, double click, edit, delete, yes double click edit delete yes and there you have it that is how you create edit or modify product categories this now concludes chapter 3 of the getting started series the purpose of this chapter was to define your user settings for your datamax label printer for your honeywell barcode scanner and for your laser printers as well. We also created new suppliers, and at the end, we defined our product categories. In Chapter 4 of the Getting Started series, we'll be creating frames and defining them either as an opening balance of frames or as new frames purchased on an ongoing basis. We hope you've enjoyed this video. 
We appreciate your attention. Have a great day. Was this video helpful? Are you enjoying Wink? Spread the word. Share Wink on your social media page.